Hi, my name is Matt Walkins with Jaboni Power Products. Today we're going to talk about installing solar on your already prepped Keystone Fusion RV. The first thing we're going to do is locate our bundle of wire. Usually that bundle of wire is going to be behind this bulkhead wall. Not every unit has an in-command system, so this may or may not be there, but your wiring should be located behind here. You're going to want a number two square head bit and it's probably four to six screws to remove uh, to take this panel off. And our wiring bundle should be behind here. It may take a little bit to get it out, but as you can see, here's our solar wiring bundle. This includes one set of wires from the solar panel, one set of wires to the battery, and then your remote cable. Now that we've located our wire bundle, we're going to disconnect the battery. We're going to want to disconnect the hot side of the battery. Uh, the reason for that is when you're back there working, even though it's 12 volt, we don't want any sparking or arcs. And it's not good on the uh, charge controller to hook it up hot. One thing I'd recommend is finding something to cover over the wires with just to keep them from accidentally making contact. Okay, now that we know our battery has been disconnected and our unit's unplugged, we're going to go ahead and separate the wiring bundle. What we've got is we want to separate the wires going to the battery from the wires going to the solar panel and from the remote cable. Now the line going up is your solar panel. The line going down through the floor is the battery charge line. So now we've got the charge line running the batteries. First thing I'm going to do is strip these and I'm going to install them into the back of the solar charge controller. This is 10 gauge wire um, and you only need to strip about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, maybe 3 eighths. And these attach in the B plus and B minus slots. So obviously red is positive. This is a pushing connector, so once it's pushed in, it's good. If you ever have to take them out, you'll need to insert a small screwdriver into there to push a relief, and the wire should come out. And then the wire with the black stripe is the negative. Make sure you twist them up so that you get all the strands in into the connection board. And now those are locked in and good. Next, we're going to hook up our wiring from the solar panel into the charge controller. Again, strip them about 3 8 quarter to three-eighths back each wire. We're doing this now because we don't have the panel installed so I know there's no voltage flowing. Give the wires a little twist to make sure that you've got all the strands locked in place. The two positive wires are closest to each other. And the negatives are separated. So we've hooked up our battery leads to the charger and to the solar panel. Right now before we mount the charger we need to find a place for ground. We can do that by running a copper line from the lug on the charger to the frame on the battery and attaching it there or you can check for continuity with one of the aluminum tubes to your battery ground. That tells me that this is a good ground and I can simply screw the charger to the aluminum tube or find a place where I like it better, screw that in and run a solid line over to that aluminum tube. So we have our charger mounted to the aluminum tube. Last thing we want to do is hook up our remote cable. Now let's go inside and hook up the remote. Now we've got to find a place to mount our remote cable. There should be a sticker like this inside your coach. What that tells me is somewhere in this wall is going to be the other end of that remote cable we saw downstairs. I'm going to go ahead and take off this panel and I'm going to see if it's behind here.
We'll pull the switch out and look for that gray wire. And there it is. So they've taped the remote cable here to this other batch of wiring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to untape this, then I'm going to mark off the back side of this panel where I want to mount the remote. So if it was me, I'd want this mounted about eye level here in the hallway. So I think right about here looks pretty good, and I know there's going to be a stud behind there, so I'm going to come over a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three pieces of tape, and I'm going to put them right here. And again, your unit maybe is going to be different than this, and you might want to put it somewhere else, but this is just kind of a good idea of how to lay it out. Now I'm going to put the panel where I want it, and I'm going to trace, and, and hopefully you can get it level. I'm going to trace the back side of it. Okay, now that I've got a spot picked out for my remote, I'm going to go ahead and drill holes in the corner just to make it a little bit easier to get through the paneling. And obviously you don't want to go crazy and push your way all the way through it. Drill out the back side, so... Now I'm going to take an oscillating tool. You can take whatever kind of saw you want. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and cut out the panel. Once you're done cutting the hole, you need to move the wire up to that hole. Now, some of your floor plans are different, so you may not have to do this. Some of you may want to put this panel way farther up. You may accidentally drop this wire down inside. Uh, or you may want to move it around a corner. What I would suggest is using a solid piece of wire to fish that other wire down or up. Just feed the solid wire in, put a loop in it. Um, if you can, if you've got to pull it a long way, you may not want to put a loop. You may want to actually hook a uh, tape it to it. Just go ahead and pull it up here. Make sure you hold on to the wire down below. And there it is. Now that I've got my wire pulled, I'm going to plug it into the back of my remote. I'm going to set my remote in. Now I'm not going to screw it in yet because I want to go down, make sure the battery's hooked up, make sure I can turn the power on, um, and that I see that it works before I go ahead and finish it up. Now I know my battery's on, so it should power up. I don't have my panels hooked up yet, so I'm not going to get any reading up there. Okay, controller comes on. I know that I've got battery voltage down here at 12.4 and my charger's off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back in the hole, make sure it fits, but I'm gonna leave it and I'm not gonna go ahead and screw it in until I'm done actually hooking up everything and I know I'm happy with what's going on. We've hooked this up, let's go upstairs and hook up the panel. Okay, now we're up on the roof and we're gonna figure out where to put our panel. I found my docking port so I know I want it to be within 30 inches of that. What I've done is I've gone to the manufacturer and I've got a blueprint of the roof that tells me where all the rafters are in the ceiling. What I know from reading this print is that 10 and a half inches back from this vent opening I start a new series of trusses and at 45 and 3 quarter inches back from there from the edge of that vent, I've got a stud in the roof. So I've aligned my panel 45 and 3 quarter inches back from there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot it right here, cover the top of that docking port. And now when I screw it to the ceiling, I know I've at least hit one set of rafters. And I want to hit the rafters definitely with the front edge of the panel just to give me some extra security. This is 7 16 inch roof decking on this particular unit so I'm fine to run the screws down into it but at least this way I know I've hit a cross member. Now we have our panel location figured out. I'm lined up with the studs I'm covering my docking port. You don't necessarily have to do this it just works well in this application. I'm going to plug in my panel before I screw it down. This is pretty simple female to male, male to female, like so, and 
two. Now, you're gonna need two things before you screw this down. Butyl tape, which is basically a putty that fits underneath, it's a sealant. You're gonna wanna screw through it. And self-leveling caulk, this is basically what this is and you're gonna cover over top of the screws that you put in. Third thing you're gonna need is the right screw. It needs to be a quarter inch and it needs to be a lag screw. You don't want to use a self-tapper here because we're going through wood into aluminum. I'm going to put one screw here and one screw here at the back edge in each one of these feet. After that, I should be secured down and I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to make sure that I've got voltage at my uh, panel. So we're done upstairs. We've checked our wiring. We know we've got power from the panel and power to the batteries. So now we're going to just finish up mounting the remote and we'll go downstairs, finish up, put everything back together downstairs and we're done. Now we've taken a unit from solar prepped to solar installed. If you have any questions, visit us at our website or you can click on the QR code on the sticker inside your unit. Thank you.